Uh, I'm Robert Dickert, and this is fast end-to-end -end testing with GraphQL. So a quick intro. I'm a developer at OKGrow, OK working with Paul and crew here. And we build web and mobile apps. We do GraphQL training, like we did at this conference. And we also run AssertJS, which is the first all JavaScript testing conference. Testing is really important for us here at OKGrow. OK and we look at it as more than just quality control. We, as programmers, are translating the business domain to working code. If you haven't encountered the term business domain before, let's look at an example. If our domain is interpersonal banking, we can make some statements about our business regarding accounts, deposits, and withdrawals. And we can extract specific terminology that describes that domain. So let's say we have a business requirement which states that clients can view their updated balance when they transfer funds. Using that, we can formulate a testing scenario. So here we have it written in Gherkin. Uh, given that Tony is logged in and he has a balance of $150, when he transfers $100 to Rodrigo, then his balance is $50. Straightforward. So let's look at the breakdown between the client and the server in this. The client must call the mutation correctly and display its outcome. The server needs to perform the actual transfer. So here your app's domain is spread across both the client and the server with different functionality in each. So let's say we write client and server tests and get them to pass. So how confident are you? Are you happy with these tests? Like what happens if both the tests are OK, but there's a problem with how the client and the server hand off between each other? In this case, your individual tests are green, but the end-to-end -end scenario is broken. So what we want is a test that makes sure the process can traverse all the way across the client to the server and back. And this brings us to end-to-end -end tests. People here are usually talking about a simulation of the app, or even a full environment of the app. Um, so with both the client and server environments. So we, we automate the input, we traverse the whole app, and then we run assertions against the results as displayed in the browser. And this feels fine conceptually. It also works. So why don't we do this all the time? Well, it's not a mystery to anyone that's done a lot of Selenium tests. These tests are just too slow for test-driven development. They're also pretty brittle and hard to set up. But what's the, uh, what's the, al what's the alternative? What if I could tell you you could have end-to-end -end tests that were fast, easy to write, and can be run as independent client and server tests? Well, there is a way. After all, we're using GraphQL, and it's already improved our process by getting front and back end devs to agree on data requirements. If you think about it, every GraphQL operation can be specified by four things, the operation, the arguments, the context, and the response. So these get used differently on the client and server, though. So on the server, uh, we can use these to directly drive an API test. We set our user's balance on a database. We use the operation variables and context to trigger our GraphQL resolver. And then we can assert against our expected result. On the client, it's a little bit different. Um, on the client, we have to set up arguments, perhaps as field state, on a form component. Uh, we trigger our mutation, maybe with a button click. Uh, and then uh, we let the client execute the mutation, where we would expect that same result that we tested on the server to come back. And we check to make sure it's displayed properly. So how do we link these tests to be part of the same end-to-end -end process? Well, I would assert that the tests can be considered part of the same end-to-end -end process if all of the following are true. So if the client and server are using exactly the same operation and variables, um, if the client and server context match up, and if the expected result of the server test is returned as the mock value to the client. What I'm describing is a contract test. Contract tests are usually used to confirm that an outside API that you depend on hasn't changed meaning we can count on the mock values in our tests. So here, we're adapting that concept to assert that our client and server tests are, in fact, part of the same request. But how do we do this? The answer is to have two worlds in which the test runs. So you get this for free if you use Cucumber, but you can do this in any framework. Let's go line by line in our test. So first line, given Tony is logged in, 
So if the client's sending a token, you actually don't need to do anything at all. You just pretend like it works. The server needs to have the user in the user context. So you can see we're not perfectly simulating off. So keep that in mind. So now uh, he has a balance of $150. Again, the client may not be concerned with this right now. Uh, the server needs to have that set uh, on the database. So when he transfers $100 to Rodrigo, uh, so here we're setting the variable and the arguments. Um, so we need to assert that the, the UI maps to the correct variables. And on the server, this is where we're actually triggering the mutation. So finally, then his balance is, is $50. This is where we do the assertion on the server. And on the client, we use that mock value to return it and check to see if it was displayed correctly. And that ties our test together. So we can run either client or server independently and remain confident in the end-to-end -end response. Uh, it means that we can run fast and lean tests that don't slow down our feedback loop. So in this paradigm, tests can easily run in, in less than a second or even faster than that. But there are a few caveats, of course. You'll probably still want to use some end-to-end -end tests. You can just use a lot less of them. Uh, there's also a risk of mistakes that will decrease your confidence. Uh, the context is one place where this could be an issue. And that's one reason why auth is still a great place for full end-to-end -end tests. Uh, finally, the setup of these tests is more complex than plain integration tests, although I would argue it's nicer than doing a ton of end-to-end -end tests. And your tests will be a whole lot faster. GraphQL makes this process really easy, um, so it's well-specified, um, because it's well-specified, uh, and it's easy to build into your infrastructure because it's the same, uh, the same parameters that you're using every time. Um, and it also provides a nice extension to the GraphQL first philosophy, uh, where you can not only agree to the schema, but to the tests. So once the front and back end have agreed to these things, uh, then you can run them independently and work toward your individual goals. So what do you think? If you're wondering where you can get this, uh, we've done a couple of proof of concept at OKGrow, but we haven't published anything so far. Uh, we have tried it in some production code, and it does work. So uh, I'd be really interested in your reactions to this. So if you're interested, please come find me after this talk. Thank you.